Today, in this video, I wanna build a live process database of everything we are doing within our Amazon business. And I wanna show you how you can do it for free so that when you hire your next virtual assistant, they're gonna come in, look at this process, and they're gonna be able to action it from day one. Number one, I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like, what we are gonna build. And then number two, I'm gonna go live and build it with you. Okay, so I wanna show you what we currently do in our business and where this whole idea came from. So one of the key things that we identified in our business is we use what's known as traction methodology. And under one of the traction methodologies is to have processes mapped within your business. Over the last two years, we've been documenting all our processes, building them out, basically just trying to refine the way we do it, learning from our mistakes and getting better. Now we have been doing this in a platform called Zoho Desk. Right here, for example, this is our process for master deal analysis. When we are analyzing a deal, we're going to go through this process. So when we're training new sources, when we're training our purchasing managers, we are going to literally go through step by step this intact process. So we're all on exactly the same page how we're analyzing a deal. So it's going to talk through like basic checks, estimated sale price, sale per month calculation, red flags, lots and lots of things to go through. This is a process which tells people how to do something to the standard by we operate. And the reason why I love Zoho Desk is number one, one, it has a version number. So every time you make a change to it, it's going to update that. So right now, this is the 51st version of this process, and I absolutely love that. Number two, I can actually see insights. So I can see how many times this process has been viewed. If my team say that they have been looking at the process while they're doing the deal analysis, and the views are still one or two, I'm just going to call because I can prove that they're not looking at it because the views have not increased. Now in my business, we have not only created a number of these processes, but we also work with our team to map these processes onto time. So this is my purchasing manager's time blocking. And right now they do what's known as analyze the deal process. They have guidelines for recommended ROI, increasing the refund or ROI for refund, and then the master deal process. So we have that and as part of their thing, they'll literally just come in every day, click on their time block of what they got to do at that time, and then load up the processes. And they're just going through. Why do we do this? because the number of tasks that you have in a given day is always going to fill and far exceed the amount of time that you have. But if you time block, then it allows you to say, I can only have this much time. How can I be as effective as possible? And by building good processes into each time block, like the review process, it just means you're gonna be doing things to a high standard consistently to a good result and efficiently as possible. Things like time blocking are amazing for productivity. And we use it excessively within our business, especially for our staff when they're doing certain things. Now, these processes, which we keep on Zoho Desk are amazing. Buying Zoho Test, setting it all up is not easy. So this is why we come to Notion. And the whole idea behind this is you are going to build a collection of how-to guides in your business of what you're doing. And when you make a mistake, let's say for example right now, if you were to ever buy a knife and realize that knives you shouldn't be selling, then you're going to come in here and put it in your process. That way next time you do an analysis and if there's a knife, you're going to go, eh, eh, that's a bad one. Or for example, we bought a product from Russia and then it got, I think, destroyed by Amazon. So unfortunately we couldn't do that or even like the brand wasn't matching. These little things are just every time you have a mistake, you improve the process and you get better. This is what we're trying to do, refine the business, make it sure we make improvements all the time. Now within our business, the way we want to operate it is by functions. And within my business, the way we operate is by having me as the owner. I have a purchasing manager. They do the purchasing function, deal analysis, purchasing. We have sourcing function. They go find products. They submit deals to the purchasing manager to analyze. And then we have another function, which is called the admin. Let's jump over to Notion right now. Let's start giving a setup. I'm here in Notion and I absolutely love it, by the way. If you've never had a chance to play with it, I just think it's a really good program. So I'll drop a link down below, which is join my newsletter because I'm going to be sharing some more information about doing this. And if you want to learn more about processes and get some like tips and tricks, have a look down below. I'll drop a link and you can join my mailing list and I'll continually update this with you. And obviously I share out processes every couple of weeks. You can take the processes I'm sharing, put them into your Notion. So ah, you're going to love that. But there's one key feature which I think could change the game. So what I've done is come over to Teams space and I've literally just done create a new team space. So here we go. I call it Amazon processes. You can call it whatever you like. Now under team space, it kind of automatically creates you some like a homepage. Absolutely brilliant. No problem. So you can see about the team resources. Absolutely fine. So I'm just going to do resources here and I'm going to be like, right, we're going to do three resources, which are going to actually we'll do four. We'll do function. So we're going to do a page, which is going to do insert a sub page. Now what I generally call this is like owner processes. And actually the way I kind of like to do them 
is I might actually do it this way, master owner. And the reason is the word master means master process. And then who is it for? The owner. So absolutely happy. I'm going to click empty page. Brilliant. So I'll come back up here and we're going to just go back to our team space. Great. Now I've got master owner. Now underneath that, I'm going to do another page and we're going to call this master purchasing manager. I'm going to create an empty page. Now back to my team space. Got another one. And then I'm going to create another one here. Cool. So I'm just literally just doing slash page. I'm going to do master dash uh, source for example, empty page, and I'll go back to my team space. And then finally, what I'll probably have down here is master. Ah, let's do it right. Sub page, and I'll do master dash admin. You can literally just search for the word master, and you know you're going to get to the very top directory. Now in here, what I'm going to think about is like, what do we need to do? So already we've done it with my purchasing manager. We're going to have some other processes. So under here, we might have processes, for example. I might just do a heading and call it processes, and then I might just have storage. And I call them like storage of suppliers or something think so really really simple so if i do heading right here heading one storage absolutely brilliant so i've got two headings and then i can create a contents table of contents at the top so what are when i click on them i can just jump straight down really good so in my processes i probably want to have a page which might be let's do deal analysis so process start that off and then call it deal review so this is my process of deal review and then obviously what i'm going to do is i'm going to come to tom's deal review process so let's go grab that now and let's just do my basic checks so i might write it out voila i'll grab these and i'm just going to come in here here and drop it in. So this is going to be my basic checks for my deal review process. And when I do my analysis, I might have two screens. I might have one with my deal on them that I'm doing analysis and the other one I might have on my process document. So I can just check that I'm actually like, yeah, get done that cool estimated sale price, done the fair market calculation, absolutely fine. And I'm just recording that. All I'm doing is just building up that database of information that I want. Now, when I have my purchasing manager, I can literally just come in and say, hey, we're going to need to train you on how to do the deal, deal analysis. Voila. Then I might have another process called process or I might do page. I might be like process how to calculate a quantity to buy. Tom needs to learn how to spell, but if anyone's ever followed my social media, you'll probably want to know that one already. So you can see it there. Now I can start building out my how to process, how to calculate quantity to buy. Now this is going to be really useful. Now again, this you kind of like, Tom, this is good. You're just saving it all. No problem. But what you might have is, we're going to put another page in here, page, and we're going to call this storage approved suppliers. Now this is quite useful. Why? Because when your sources are sourcing, you probably want them to be thinking about like going to suppliers or maybe approved brands, for example. And by having a list like this just allows your sources to come back to it and go, oh, that supplier is good. That supplier is not. So for example, Clinique right now is just being blocked. So we probably want to put that on there and say no. Now, when you're in here, the one thing you might want to be thinking about is like having a list of approved suppliers. This is going to be really helpful. For example, in my business, if I kind of give you a bit of a structure that we operate on, I might create a table and you can do a database table or just a, a normal table. So I might do a normal table. Let's say, for example, this, I'm going to put a couple of rows down here. So this is going to be uh, supplier call and I might do URL for example and we might be cancels orders cancel cancels orders cool and then it might be that Amazon accepts invoices for IP cool so and then we might be like voucher codes and so we could actually link so we could put a page in there if you want we could actually link to another page for example of all the old known voucher codes that we want we could even do things like do they cancel orders do they have voucher codes cash back other little things like that now also in our supplier list we not only have these we have other things like do they accept Amazon do they allow bulk orders? We just want to know this information because this information is going to just allow us to go out of all the suppliers we're focusing on, which ones are really good and which one should we say no? This might be like the approved supplier list or it could just be even a supplier list. So, and then you might even have one more approved and then we can grab this and Tom wants to get it over here. So I'll hide this. We take the approved, move that there. So this could be no, yes. And this might be like, if you're in the US, for example, Walmart, Target and Nike and then let's call it Argos if you're in the UK, for example. So it might be like approved to source. No, no, yes, no. And you can do it that way. The reason why I really like this is the fact that what you're able to do is just to start building out information about suppliers which work for you. Maybe build out voucher codes you can put in here. Like I might have a link, for example. And if I come back here, one second, and if I just do storage, page, storage, hold, voucher codes and I'd probably do empty page and I'd probably go table of contents and I'd probably just go here heading I call it heading three and we call it like Walmart and then we'll go Walmart and then we'll do like heading three target for example and so and then I might have like heading three which is called like Argos we talked about them earlier on now under Argos I might have one of the codes we could do a little list is called like checkout 13 so that's absolutely brilliant is I can just take this URL come back to my master process and then I can go back to my should we say team space I 
don't know where I just put it. So purchasing manager, and then we might do approve suppliers. And then in here, I click on that, do link. And then I can just see here, if I type in uh, codes, so nope, there are my other ones, so voucher codes. So fantastic. So what I can do in my table, I can have this. And when you want voucher codes, you can click on that and you're going to jump straight through. So it just allows you to move between processes, storage documents really, really quickly, keeping things updated. And as you learn information or as you find something that works, you keep updating this. And for example, in my business, we're doing things like IP complaints. What are the templates we're using? We're doing things like suppliers, which suppliers are canceling? What are doing Amex? Who is the people that we're talking to? We're just starting to store all this information. Now, the one reason why I love Notion is the fact that A, it's free. B, when you come into these, so say for example here, I can go to here. I can literally do actually page analytics, view page analytics, and I can see how many times someone's viewed it. I can also see who's viewed it, and I can see previous updates, which again is exactly what we're doing in Zoho Desk. Absolutely love that. The other one that I really love about it is the fact that you can link really dynamically between things. It's very useful. But there's one key feature which I think could change the game. Within Notion, they have what's known as Notion AI. Now, I don't use this, but I think it could be game changing because what you can do is you can pay for Notion and then you can literally just search Notion for your question and answers. Now, imagine you've got a VA for $8 per month or $10 on the GA monthly one. If they've got any questions before they ask you, they just ask Notion. And Notion's going to search that team space of all the Q&As. They're going to find it. And then they're going to be able to do what they need to do without you, which just changes the game and makes your life so much easier. So all you need to do is think about every time you do something, ask yourself the question, start recording it. Number two, as you do it, update it, refine it, make it better, build out that time blocking and then improve it. This could be changing the game for you. I love Notion so much. I'm thinking about moving my Amazon USA business off Zoho Desk onto Notion because I think this is even better. By the way, we paid quite a bit of money for Zoho Desk to do it and set it up. If you're a six-figure seller wanting to systematize and scale your business to seven figures and beyond, what can I recommend? Check out the Fast Track FBA Seller Academy. This is my high-level mastermind where I share all the insights, actual tips and tricks, but not only that, the strategies, SOPs and the processes that I have used to build two seven-figure Amazon businesses and I continue to learn from other Amazon sellers. Now, if you are interested in building a business with virtual assistants using leverage to scale and you want to know exactly the step-by-step -step playbook that we have used, the numbers, the targets, every single sheet that we use and all of the tracking that we do alongside this to get results, check out the Fast Track FBA Seller Academy. I'll drop a link down below. Check it out today. Join that link down below. Get out of the job of the business and start becoming an owner, not an operator, and think this could change the game for you.